the day that the Lord has made. We're gathered here today to praise and worship the Lord. May the Holy Spirit guide us, strengthen our faith today and forever. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to say good morning to everyone, uh, and thanks for joining me on the third uh, Sunday of Advent. And thanks to those who are watching on YouTube. Um, we'll start off with our announcements. Uh, weather permitting, tomorrow is our uh, consistory meeting. Third, uh, Tuesday happens to be my last class of this series in the Preaching Elder series. So I'll have gone halfway through all of my courses uh, after Tuesday night. Um, I do have my paper to, to submit and my homework to do, but uh, that's all ready to go. And the fun part is uh, my paper is on the church. Like, I had to pick something to write a paper about, so I picked the church. Oh. Are you going to read it for us? <laughs> I could read it. I, I, let's put it this way. I will read it to you if you'd like me to. Like, I'll make, a, I'll make a Sunday where we go over my paper. Like, and I'm more than happy to share. It was uh, this year, or this cycle, was uh, theology of the church. And one of the things was, how do you know Jesus loves me, right? And it started out with that little kid song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, right? And then that was how our course started this year, or this cycle, and then it grew into more things, and more things, and more things. And it really, uh, it really worked on our faith, right? It really was, uh, uh, the theology of, of the Reformed Church is more about our faith and our beliefs than really uh, just, oh yeah, on this day in history, you know, which is what I thought it was going to be. And then when it said, oh, we're going to talk about revelations. So I'm like, no, oh, hmm, that's interesting. We're going to go across a whole eight weeks of Book of Revelations. No. We didn't talk about revelations at all. Tuesday night is revelations. It was all the revelations that God's done to you or for you or in his name around you. So the revelations of the beauty of the earth was really the focus of our book of theology, which was uh, a very interesting course for me to take. So with that, um, the sidebar was, that wasn't our announcement, but it came out, you know? So some things are just meant to be said. Uh, so with that, weather permitting tomorrow will be our consistory meeting. Uh, we'll keep an eye out. I don't want anybody to go out if it's gonna be 12 to 18 inches of snow. Oh boy, oh boy. And then, I don't know, is it gonna all snow like that in one rip? Some people say it's gonna start tomorrow and then end on Wednesday. Others say it's gonna be like three little five inch blasts, so it's gonna end up being a lot of snow, but it's gonna come in, in cycles. So we'll keep an eye out. Um, since I am the VP of Consistory, uh, we'll make a call, like let's say, after lunch, when it's snowing, we're quitting, right? <laughs> so if it's snowing, you're, you'll get a message from me that says, let's postpone. Um, unfortunately, my class is on Tuesday, so it would be later in the week, potentially. So we'll see what works out. I don't have a big agenda for tomorrow, so it would be a, a, a quicker meeting anyways. Okay. Um, so if you notice, there's uh, food pantry needs. We have cereal, soup, cake mix, instant potatoes, and pasta. And the soup, the food pantry can always use monetary donation. So there's not a money box out there per se, but they're always in need of just about any kind of, it is the food pantry, so any type of foods, uh, preferably canned and not uh, frozen, right? That would kind of go bad in that box. And then um, Sandy's here, and I, I like to thank you for uh, being our delivery person of all of the clothes and the, the garments and the towels and the blankets. I know you go down there often. Um, and then, the donations also. Yeah, you're welcome. 
And then Carrie, you you wanted to uh, yeah. say things. Good morning. Um, I just want to make a quick announcement about the interface partnership for the homeless. Betsy and I delivered a dessert yesterday that we were on schedule for on behalf of Clarksville Community Church. And I want to shout out to Karen Riley for donating the ice cream and Maria and Betsy for buying and making the brownies to go along with it. I'm sure they are delicious. <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot for uh, your part, Matt. I appreciate it. And thank you all for, uh, for bringing our church community together to to uh, share our fellowship with them. Then uh, you'll notice that Hoffman's Car Wash, the Helping Hands Car Wash fundraiser, um, uh, Paul and Deb went, I should remember where they went, but they're not here because they traveled. And the first oh, there you go. Yeah, maybe the I don't know, they went somewhere. So uh, the 14th, which is uh, Tuesday, is the last night or the last day for the car wash helping hand cycle. Um, it has been a good fundraiser for us. So uh, if you do want to buy it, we still have uh, two more days to tag Clarksville Community Church and then half of the car wash goes back to the church. And then we have uh, Cookie Exchange coming up uh, March 25th, 2 o'clock. Um, and then Diane said we needed to bring three dozen cookies to exchange, have them labeled and in little bags so that we can just go down the table and pick the cookies we want. Uh, how fitting for our Lent season of fasting to have a cookie exchange in the middle. <laughs> Not calling her out, but <laughs> timing is everything. I'll, I'll be, uh, I'm going to be traveling to Florida on the 22nd. So I'll be missing our cookies. Oh. Well, save yourself. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to save yourself. <laughs> they might be freezable. Then uh, Maria's been gracious enough to be our chairperson for the Easter breakfast. Uh, it'll be at 9.30 <coughs> on the 9th. And then I'm going to be uh, overseeing the Easter egg hunt on the 8th. And we'll go from 1 to 3 for the Easter egg hunt. So we were considering, I talked to Joan maybe Tuesday of that week uh, because we have a few other events coming. We have, uh, there's a Wednesday service, a Thursday service, and a Friday service all in that week, week leading up to Easter. So we have Monday, Thursday, we have Good Friday, we have uh, Dave Goes Bowling on Wednesday. Uh -huh. So. There's an event on Wednesday also. <laughs> so, so maybe Tuesday night we'll, we'll get together Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, and we'll stuff uh, Easter eggs so that our Easter egg hunt will be a success. Yes. They'll have something in them. Uh, There's a format that you have to to be. Perfect. Uh, and Maria has put um, in the narthex their sign-up sheets and, and donation sheets so that if you would like to... Uh, Donate Easter candy or eggs for the eggs, toast for the French toast, sausage for the sausage, and desserts for our fellowship of Easter breakfast. It's all down there. So uh, just know it's down there in the narthex and take a look. Then we have um, we have a flower donation sheet at where you where the bulletins were and Joan was sitting. There's a page there for flowers and donations for Easter. So if you are considering donating flowers or having flowers on display Easter Sunday in memory of, um, please put your name so we can record it in the bulletin. And then we have, let's see, we're down to Lent service. There's a Lent Saturday worship service. And Wally, I'm sorry. I didn't ask about giving your uh, phone number to Richard Vanderbilt, but I passed your phone number along to Richard. So, anybody, anybody can have mine. <laughs> so I should have I asked first. Put it all front on a neon sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so September, or uh, sorry, April 1st at 10 a.m., uh, an Esquithal Reformed Church is going to do a Saturday uh, worship service, which is, there's not going to be a breakfast, but there is going to be uh celebrating the gift of God's music, and during the Lenten season, it'll be just a time of fellowship and praise. 
Uh, we also have the Yankee Trails, and that is going from the Strasburg Rail uh, with a lunch, a train ride, a trip to Hershey Farms, um, an optional show of Moses, and then that information is all in your bulletin, so I'm not going to read through the whole thing. Uh, there's a Maudie Thursday Worship Committee meeting next Saturday at 10 o'clock at the Unionville Church. So if you'd like to um, be a part of the worship for Monday Thursday at Unionville, the meeting is Saturday coming up. And then last but not least, for my side of the announcements, um, we still have the spring cleanup sheet down in the Northex for uh, people to pick an area of the church to uh, tidy up a little bit. Um, our Cheryl, who generally vacuums and cleans, uh, was not feeling well this week, so um, she came in this morning and just tidied up a little bit and left because she's uh, not in the best. You know, she's got a headache. She's got. She's got. I, who knows if it's seasonal or if there's something coming. So with that, are there any other announcements? So let us <laughs> sorry, man. So then let's turn to our prayer concerns. Um, please keep the family of Dorothy Pillsbury Roman in our prayers. She passed on three two, and that's uh, I know that was the grandma to some of the rarest in the hills. And are there any updates or or additional prayer concerns? Seeing none, so let us begin with worship. Dear Lord, with your infinite, with your infinite love and goodness, you've shown us that prayer, fasting, and almsgiving are remedies for sin. Accept our humble admission of guilt, and when we consciously weigh, when it consciously weighs us down, let your unfailing love raise us up. We ask this in our prayers, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, please join me with our responsive call to worship found in your bulletin. Welcome, thirsty people. Welcome, frightened people. Welcome, advocating people. Welcome loving people. We gather together to worship our God who loves us. Amen. And our first hymn is number 430, I Must Tell Jesus. <laughs>
Dear Lord, too often we fail to love the way you've shown us to love. You know your steadfast, we know your steadfast love is everlasting, eternal, and boundless, yet we continue to follow our own desires and ignore your will. Forgive us, dear Lord, for our lack of faith, and have mercy on us our Lord, for our weaknesses. Restore in us our love with such love and trust that you may walk again and we may walk again in your way and find pleasure in doing your will. We ask you, dear Lord, to enlighten our minds that we may know the sins we ought to confess and grant us your guidance and grace to confess our sins fully, humbly, and with a peace of heart. Here are silent prayers of confession now, dear Lord. Remember, the prayers of a righteous person are powerful and effective. Now let us come before God and confess our sins as is printed in our bulletin. Dear Lord, we confess that we have elevated the things of this world above you. We have made idols and possessions of the people and used your name for causes that are not consistent with you or your purposes. We too often have permitted our schedules to come first and have not set aside time to pray or to worship you. We have not always honored you as you've guided us through our lives, and sometimes, dear Lord, we have yearned for and sometimes taken those things that are not ours. We have instructed others with intentions by turning our backs when we should have been helping. Forgive us, God, for the many ways we fall short of your glory. Help us to learn to live together According to your ways, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, hear these words of assurance. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from that law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of these least of the less commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least to the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches the commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And now, here's the summary of the law. When Jesus was asked about the greatest commandment in the law, he did not reply by listing the Ten Commandments. Instead, the Lord said, You shall love your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophet. Amen. <laughs> Oh, come, 
Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Now, as we prepare for our scripture today, please join me in the confession of our faith by repeating the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God and the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under conscious God, was crucified, died, and was buried. And he descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into the dead. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. So much is happening in our world. We don't know how we should be acting, how we should be responding. Some of us are terrified and some of us are really afraid. Others are frustrated. Provide us guidance, dear Lord. We want to ensure the safety of everyone and we want to enjoy our lives without fear. We're concerned for those who are extra vulnerable, those who are ill. We're concerned for those who are grieving, for those who are anxious. For those who live in poverty, those who are lonely. And we are also concerned for those who live without knowing you, dear Lord. Please, Lord, 
We ask that you provide them with the comfort and guidance that you provide us. Open all of our eyes so we may see your glory and the grace of your God, our God. Please, Lord, be with those on our prayer list. Provide answers for those who have unanswered questions. Provide wisdom to those doctors and caregivers which watch over us. Watch over the firefighters, emergency personnel, police, and the military. You've called them to protect and serve, and please, dear Lord, watch over them and protect them. Lord, help us find ways to love our love all of your people. And by doing so, help us find ways to expand your love to the world. Provide guidance to us, dear Lord, and keep us safe in all that we do. And now, as we lift our prayers and praises to you, dear Lord, let us pray together, repeating the Lord's Prayer, as you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. Give us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. And now let us uh, continue our praise with hymn number 425 in the garden.
Now let us go back and to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, God, please guide us and enlighten us so that we may seek and know you through your word. May we be led by your light so our heart may be open and become your light to shine through us onto this world. We pray that we receive every word you speak to us today through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, as some of you might have gotten a bulletin a little early, um, you notice that it's a small book, right? There's a lot of scripture today. Um, you'll hear from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 4, verses 5 through 42. It's the story of the Samaritan woman at the well with Jesus. If you listen closely, you should be able to feel as if you were sitting there at the well with him. My reading is the standard English version. The scripture is uh, printed in the bulletin. You could follow along on pages 1114 and 1115, and it is almost both pages, so it is a lot of scripture. Here are these words. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sachar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tired out by his journey, was sitting in by the well, and it was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to find food or buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask me to drink, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews did not have anything in common with the Samaritans and did not share with them. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket. The well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Are you greater than those, an those ancestors of Jacob who gave us the well and his sons and his flocks? drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become to them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water, for that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus then said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman then answered him, I have no husband. Then Jesus said to her, You're right in saying that. I have no husband, for you have five husbands, and one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus then said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Your worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming. And it is now here, when the true worship church will call worship of the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks just as these to worship Him. God in spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman then said to Him, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When He comes, He will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came back. They were astonished to see that he was speaking to this woman, but no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? When the woman left her water jar and went back to the city, she said to the people, come and see this man who told me everything I've ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city 
where they were and went on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat, but that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is also receiving wages and a gathering and is gathering fruit for eternal life, and the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the same holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you the reap to reap that for which you did not labor. Others had labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed him because the woman's testimony, he told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believers came to listen to his word because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of our world. This is the word of God. So I'd like to start with a brief little prayer. Lord, please touch all of our hearts with today's message. Allow us to feel God's love and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is the story of a nameless woman, at, uh, in a Samaritan woman at a well, recording only, it's recorded only in God, John's Gospel. So the scripture is full of truths and powerful lessons that we can use today. I, uh, I've just read about Jesus' conversation with a lone woman, and we can say it's at Jacob's well. It's printed that it's Jacob's well. That well is in Sachar, just outside of Samaria. So this woman, she's extraordinary. She's a Samaritan. It's a race of Jews that are utterly just despised. They don't believe, they don't have God in them. They, like, it's a group of people that the Jews are like, eh, we don't want nothing to do with. So most of the people uh, have said she's an outcast, and they look down on her. And most of the Jews look down on those people. This is evident by the fact that she came to draw water by herself from a communal well in the middle of the biblical time that community well was where people gathered and it was sort of like the coffee pot or the water, the water cooler of the time where everybody kind of got together and they gossiped, they talked about people, they talked about their lives. And this woman came by herself because she was shunned. So she was banished, she was unpopular, she was marked immoral, unmarried, living only with the six of her husband. Um, uh, so we look. So, but overall, this story is about a woman who is at a well, and it's to teach us that God's love for all of us, in spite of our sinful lives, that God values us enough that He actively seeks us and He welcomes us in intimacy and to rejoice in our worship. <coughs> As a result of the conversations that we just heard, only a person like a Samaritan woman, an outcast from her own people, could understand what that really meant. So when you've been down and out, and you've had God touch you, you then know that feeling. So this story is meant to touch our souls and make us feel like we are that Samaritan woman. All of us should now know how it feels to be wanted. We should all know the feeling of how it is to be cared for when no one else cares for us. We should all uh, see in ourselves the value from within that's demonstrated in our story of God's grace and God's gift of love. So with that, 
there's also a lot of other valuable lessons to be taught in our story. And I have them broken down. Um, the first lesson would be, only through Jesus can we obtain and receive eternal life. Jesus answered her by saying, everyone who drinks this water will, will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the living water will never be thirsty again. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water that wells up to eternal life. This water welling up to eternal life is the Holy Spirit inside of us. So it is that Holy Spirit when it touches us that is now in us and it's working within each of us. It's a spiritual water, not a bottle of great value water, right? Home is Poland Springs. So that spiritual water that flows from us will then be a source of spiritual healing in us and it will refresh us. And this will help us become the ministers of Jesus' name and of Jesus' word. So we will then be able to go out and show people that love. The second point was Jesus' minister to all of those who are outcast by the Jewish society. Remember, he talked to the Samaritans, right? The outcasts, the poor, the, pro, the, the downtrodden, the people that were like no one else wanted to talk to. And this revealed that all the people are, valued, are valuable to God and of God. And that Jesus desired that we demonstrate the love that he taught us by demonstrating love to everyone, whether we see eye to eye with them or we don't see eye to eye, we should still love. The third point was Jesus is the Messiah. We heard him say in verse 25, or in, in chapter 4, verses 25 and 6, the woman said, I know the Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. And then Jesus said to her, I am he who you speak of. Could you imagine that person next to you saying, I am he who you speak of. And you'd be like, Ooh. right? You'd have that lump in your throat real quick. So by faith, just like that Samaritan woman, God talks directly to us. And he does talk to us. He answers you through your prayers. Our fourth point was those who worship God worship him in spirit and in truth. This is from the verses 23 and 24. This means that when we worship God in spirit, meaning among other things, that it has to come from within, from our heart. We're not just talking the talk, we're actually feeling the feeling of wanting to worship. It's the most sincere and the most motivating form of God's love and the expression of gratitude that we could give him. We worship from within and we need to show that as God showed it to us. And last but far from, from least of my points in this piece, our testimony about Jesus is powerful and it's a tool that we can use to lead others. Right? So we heard the scripture read, many of the Samaritans from all the towns believed, and because of the woman's testimony, then the woman said, he told me everything I ever did. And they stayed for two days with him. And because of his word, and many more believers came, and they said to the woman, no longer believe just because of what you said, but now we believe for ourselves because of what we and we know that this man is really the savior of our world. We can then, and we should be, our own lives should be disciples. Just as the disciples were there, we should then be disciples. We should be able to go and spread that word. And we're not quite done yet. <laughs> Even though we could be done, there's more. Um, the story has some messages about salvation also. And there's three key points of salvation that are coming from this message. The first point was salvation comes only to those who recognize their desperate need of spiritual life that they don't have. So their lacking of their spiritual life in their spiritual life creates that means of salvation. 
that allows that living water to be obtained and recognized inside of us so that our spirituality, our spiritual thirst is then quenched. The second point would be salvation comes to those who confess and repent their sins and their desire for forgiveness. You heard in our prayer of confession, we confess our sins. We have a desire for forgiveness. We asked for that earlier. Before this immoral woman could embrace the Savior, she had to concede all of her burdens of sin. And then last but not least, actually in this case, last but and least, right, in closing, salvation came to only to those who took hold of Jesus as their Messiah. For the absolute truth is that salvation is found in no one else but in believing in our God. So in closing, I'd like to offer this brief prayer. Heavenly Father, as we consider the Samaritan at the well, who came to Jesus, heard his message, and chose to drink the living water he had offered, it's wonderful to know that no one is excluded from drinking the living water of life and spiritual healing that you offer us. Thank you for the living water you offer us, for which we have, you have freely given to us. It comes without a cost, and because of the living spring within us that wells up to us and gives us eternal life, may we all drink deep from the fountain that you supply to resist temptation so that we can do this with our own strength. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So the abundant grace of God is a gift to us. We receive... We receive grace and forgiveness from God's amazing love that is revealed to us through Jesus Christ. God shared his love so freely, gave, giving it to us so that we can share that same love to one another. Through our faith in the Lord, all things are possible. We now come to the time in our service when we can reflect on the message. And as we listen to Wally's offertory song, uh, let us present our tithes and offerings. Sorry, well, didn't mean to get you up and then down.
to you, dear Lord. We give back from the abundant blessings that you've given to all of us. May our gifts be accepted in your sight. May these gifts be used to further glorify your kingdom. We count our blessings and we can count on your glory. Let your wisdom, honor, power be our strength unto you, God, today and forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our final hymn is number 307. Send the light. <laughs> 